Welcome to the session techies. My name is Yogesh Kumar. In this session, we are going to talk about Python virtual n. This session is going to be quick introduction and going to cover basics of virtual n. So first thing we have to understand what is virtual n. So friends, uh, Python virtual n is a tool to create isolated Python environments. It does not actually install separate copies of Python, but it does provide a way to keep different project environments isolated. Basically, for each project, you can create separate directories. In that way, they are isolated. And each directory will have its uh, base Python and the pip modules or the configuration which you do for that particular project. Next thing comes like why we need virtual end. So for a minute, let's assume you got uh, two projects which got uh, different requirements. Let's say project A need uh, one particular version of Python with uh, some different uh, pip modules. On other project, you need to have uh, some higher Python version and higher version of pip module. On a single system, you can't uh, have a uh, a same module with different versions right so with virtual and you can create separate virtual environments and you can keep whatever your required module version your Python version so that's a easy and uh, other benefit when you use a uh, virtual and you don't need special privilege to install pip packages for example, in last videos, I have discussed how you can install AWS CLI. So the whole process which we done during those video that was with root user. You need to be root to install AWS CLI, right? If you use your virtual end, you don't need to be root. As a normal user or I can say as a non-root user, you can easily install or manage your pip installations. So that's a, another benefit of virtual end. How you can install virtual land? That's easy. Basically, you need pip or you can use easy underscore install. So you can see on my screen that's a simple command pip install virtual land or easy underscore install virtual land. To verify whether your installation finished, uh, you can run pip show virtual land, which will tell you which particular virtual land version you got on your system. Otherwise, you can run virtual land dash dash version. So it will tell you. What is the virtual and version you got in lab today we are going to create a virtual env with name project one inside home directory of a user which is named as app user on my system and uh, this is going to be base path slash home slash app user this is home directory and i have created a further subdirectory with name my virtual env so this is the directory which is going to keep all the virtual envs for uh, user app user so this is something we are going to do first we will create a virtual and following the steps on my screen and uh, after that we are going to activate the virtual and to use that virtual and you have to basically activate it first so once your virtual and active user can do all stuff whatever Python related like they can use pip install they can manage pip installation basically whatever removal they want whatever modifications they want and let's assume your work is finished yeah, then you can deactivate that particular virtual end by deactivate command in case you want to delete that virtual end that's very simple simply remove the directory where you installed virtual end for example the project one was a directory which is our virtual end and let's say uh, you want to use uh, Python 3 as your interpreter. Generally, what happens uh, when you install pip? So by default, the Python version on your system, let's say it's uh, Python 2. So that will be default for your old virtual ends. But let's say on your system, you got Python 2.7 and Python 3.4. But the virtual end you want to get created with Python 3 or uh, 3.4. Then in that case, while creating your virtual end, you can tell your Python interpreted with minus P Python 3 in this case, which means uh, my virtual end will get Python 3 as interpreter by default. 
or another way simple virtual and dash dash python is equal to python 3 then your environment so it will make a python 3.4 in this case because on my system i got python 3.4 so whatever version you want to make a, as python interpreter on your virtual app simply specify it so let's jump to technical session where i can demonstrate the things which we just discussed so friends uh, this is my centos 7 system okay first thing we have to verify whether got pip installed or not so simply run pip if you see command not found or you can with run check with rpm if you see pip is not there so let's install pip first this is sent to us so i am using yum otherwise uh, you can use apt get uh, or whatever the mechanism you got uh, on different linux releases okay friends uh, pip is installed now let me check pip okay so pip is working now and uh, let's quickly check what is the python version on my system it's a 2.7.5 or uh, let me check if i got any other version also so if you see on my system i got python 2 only which is basically 2.7 in this case let me quickly install python 3 also so i can give you a quick demo how you can use a different python interpreter when creating virtual end so python 34 uh, that's a package name for python 3.4 i'm saying install it with minus y it should be quick because my net speed seems good today okay python 3 install let me quickly verify okay if you see python 3 is available so i got python 2 and python 3 so the first thing how to install virtual lamp simply using pip install virtual lamp this is a command to install virtual lamp so pip will download all the dependency packages if any right now there was no dependency required so it installed virtual lamp this particular version how you can verify whether installation worked so simply run pip show that's a command to show what are the packages or what about any particular package if you see here it is telling uh, this is metadata version this is package name this is version package version this is a summary and uh, the it got uh, these programming languages linked basically with this particular version can work with this python versions so that's good and uh, let's create a user for test as i mentioned i'm going to use app user sorry okay so that's fine let me switch to user okay now i am app user so let me quickly demonstrate you how virtual and works and what is the benefit let's say i am a normal user because uh, i don't have root privilege and i want to list the packages i am able to list right i can list all the pip packages let's say i want to install aws cli pip install aws cli press enter sorry it's pip download worked and uh, it is checking dependencies and uh, it downloaded all dependencies but when installing if you see we got error most recent call failed what is the issue permission denied because uh, my user app user is not a privileged user that's the reason it can't write to directories and it got error so that's something which is failing as a normal user i cannot manage my own pip installations i can use whatever the global installation global mean uh, the installation which is 
executed or performed by root but i can't manage my local installation so that's a showstopper for a developer right if you're a developer you go dependency on your uh, system admin to install packages for you for example let's say they go turn around time of three days to execute your request then your project will be delo delayed so let's make use of virtual end so this is my home directory my users home directory let me create one directory for the directory virtual ends so this is a directory which is going to hold app users whole virtual ends so i'm just cd into this directory so let's create our first virtual end so command is virtual end then simply specify your virtual end name let's say i want to name virtual end project one or whatever you want you can name it you can name it with your project let's say you are running some financial project you can say virtual end financial if you are running some web server virtual end web server whatever your requirement okay let me press enter now if you see by default it picked python 2 here why it python 2 uh, because uh, pip which we installed that was with python 2 if i installed pip using python 3 then python 3 would be my default but right now it's python 2 and if you see this command finished successfully and it created a executable in this particular virtual end with bin python so it copied the required file into this path so now let's activate our virtual end it's only created it's not activated if we want to use virtual env, the particular environment which we created, we have to activate it. So to activate it, uh, right now I am in my base directory where I am going to keep all virtual envs, right? So I have to run command source space environment name and bin and activate. This is the command. When you press enter, if you see here, the prompts are changed. Now this is my virtual env, this is my user on which server. And this is a virtual end. So this is the way like I can confirm I got my virtual end. So let's run Python minus V. Okay, it got Python 2.7.5. Let me run my pip list. So by default, uh, if you see these are the installations which are available. Only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven packages which are default. When you install python pip and let me quickly show you the packages which were displayed when i run py pip list command as root sorry as app user because with app user i got all the packages which are installed globally if you see these are more than 15 20 packages right it but in my virtual env i got only these four or five packages so that's a way like uh, this is completely isolated from the global installation and let's say I want to install AWS CLI now. If you remember last time it failed because user was not able to write into user slash USR. So let me run it AWS install AWS CLI. Same command I'm running. It's again downloading. So let's see if it can write or not. If you see it stored everything inside this particular directory and it finished. So what it means? We return everything inside our virtual env, not globally. So that's the beauty of Python virtual env. Let me run pip list now. Okay, if you see now the package count and uh, this is our AWS CLI which got installed. And let me run AWS command. Okay, if you see it is giving me option like you can run in that way. It means my AWS CLI got installed successfully. So that's a way friends. Uh, with this user, I got this particular virtual env. And uh, let me quickly show you. Let me deactivate uh, this in environment. Okay, it's deactivated. If you see prompt is now changed. Let me create one another environment with project 2. virtual and space this time i'm saying with minus p that uh, my python interpreter need to be python 3 because last time it was python 2 if you remember for project 1 i'm saying with minus p need to be python 3 or i can say python 3.4 because it got both uh, 
executables now in woman name i am saying this is my project 2 because previous one was project 1 and if you see this time it used python 3 as interpreter last time it was python 2 so that's a way like you can use different python interpreter let me activate this environment okay it's activated let me quickly see what is the python version inside it should be 3 now sorry it's python why i typed project sorry python minus v if you see it's python 3.4 and let's quickly check what are the packages here if you see it again go default packages but aws cli is not there because we have installed aws cli in project one virtual environment not in project two so that's a beauty your installation is isolated and let me deactivate it again and let's activate our project one virtual end okay so again i'm running source command and it's active let's run pip list again i'm just looking to show you how it works if you see it got its own packages so that's a way friends uh, you can keep your uh, python installations isolated from each other so i just demonstrated how you can create python virtual ends how you can use different interpreters how you can activate it how you can deactivate it let me quickly show you another thing it's always recommended to deactivate instead of pressing ctrl c i want to delete a virtual end so right now i got two virtual ends so simply run rm minus rf and your virtual end name this is my virtual end name it's related so that's a simple like how you can delete a virtual end you will hear like many companies nowadays many developers who are working with python projects or python installations you make use of virtual end there are another tools like virtual end wrapper or uh, another virtual end related tools which uh, mostly developer use but I thought uh, to give you a quick demo how you can use virtual end. I'm sure uh, this session may be helpful for beginners. And uh, once you know basics, you can uh, have a research, you can learn the advanced things and same thing. So thanks for watching this video. If you have any query, any suggestion, just leave a comment on my YouTube channel. Thanks again, friends. Bye-bye.